Yeah, say hi to the camera, Noel. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> hey guys, I am here in Jacksonville, Florida, and it is hot. It is the hottest Halloween on record. It's like pushing 87 degrees right now, but it's been a long time coming. I'm finally ready to show you my 38 foot Chris Craft Corinthian 1978 Dual Crusader 454 V8 big blocks. This thing is amazing. It is my dream come true. Literally, figuratively, everything in between. I can't wait to show you around. Come on, let's check it out. So right now, the way I have it set up is you have to step across this ravine right here, which isn't for everybody, but the good news is if you wanted to back it in, then you could easily walk onto the swim platform. I'll show it to you in just a couple seconds. And you walk into the cockpit. Hey, all right, I love this area. This is something that a lot of boats, like the Chris Craft Catalina of the same era, don't actually include is this great working space for tying off lines you could go fishing off here you could cook a barbecue out here you could really do anything and just look at that view <sighs> this right here is the reason i live on a boat i mean bar none Th this is it this is amazing it's the best view in the town it, it really is Underneath this carpet, you've got hatches to access the, uh, the rudder gear and prop shafts, everything. So let's take our very first look inside. And you can see, it's like an actual apartment in here. You've got a queen size bed, you've got a twin size bed, you've got plenty of storage for clothes, shoes, you've got an air conditioner inside the master bedroom, or excuse me, the, the master state room. Yeah, I'm, I'm still learning to use boat language instead of house language, but uh, here we go anyway. Here is the master head, and it's actually pretty big. Uh, you don't see this kind of thing very often, but there's even a full size stand-up shower that's not a wet head. This is a separate shower inside uh, of the head. You don't see that often on boats of this size. Normally you'd have to go to 50 or 60 feet to get that, which is a, a pretty basic convenience, uh, and it works great. Moving forward, we get to the star of the show on the inside. This is the salon, and it is huge. You've got these Big open windows. Again, you don't see this on really any other boat of this size. Uh, this is, again, only 38 feet long. And it, it feels and looks uh, like much more luxurious than that. And of course, you've got the lower helm, which it's pretty cool to have a full boat helm in your living room. I'll tell you that much. Uh, you've got all your AC and DC breakers and controls. This couch came with the boat, and it's okay for right now, but I'm looking to replace it pretty soon. You've got uh, your full galley here. You've got a sink, oven, stove, and fridge. You've got a microwave, coffee maker, you name it, you've got it. And check this out. That's where the stoves are. How cool is that? This is original to the boat, by the way. This has not been replaced. And you've got plenty of storage up here for glassware, everything you need. All these cabinets are original too. What you do is you have to lift up and out. That's so that it doesn't open up while you're traveling. This cabinet right here used to be stairs, like what's there. Uh, it was replaced sometime, I assume, in the mid 80s uh, when they replaced all of this because this used to be the most 70s groovy party boat in existence. I'll show you an original picture here. This was all shag carpet and dark wood paneling it was it was as cool as you could get in 1978 obviously that needed to change though so I'm very happy that uh it's been updated just a little bit and I'm going to continue uh making it more modern as it goes because as much as it would be cool to take it back to original I don't think anyone really <laughs> wants that um at least not for this kind of boat and you may be saying to yourself Cullen I see the xbox but where's the tv well you probably guessed it. It's up here. This thing is one of the first modifications that I made when I bought the boat. How freaking cool is that? And check it out, I'm playing freaking Rocket League on my boat. 
I don't know. This isn't for everyone, but this is one modification that I just had to make. And I, I made it in such a way to where it folds out of the way, doesn't cover any windows. And most people, when they see the boat for the very first time, they don't expect there to be a 50 inch 4K TV inside the ceiling. So anyway, this is really cool for me, but I know it's not for everybody. And that's why I made it to where it could hide away. And you're done playing. You just put it back up in the ceiling, latch these triple redundant latches, lock the latch, and walk away. You've still got your beautiful view. All right, above your helm, you've got this really cool, I don't even know what to call this, like a dashboard area. But anyway, I see I've got a, a, like a plant there just to, to make things a little bit brighter. Um, this is my sound system for the time being. It's kind of more or less matches the era. Uh, and over here I've got some, some navigation tools. I've got some handheld radios, binoculars, and this. I'll get back to this in a second. And down this way, I promise it's not as dark and creepy as it looks. This is a very cozy uh, Foxhall, V-Berth, whatever you want to call it, forward, uh, forward cabin. There's, there's a million words for it. This is how it works. So underneath you've got these cushions and you've got that triangle shaped cushion slash wood cutout and it'll go right here make this a really it's king size bed across this way and it just gets narrower toward the front so you can easily fit two people even adults down here and it's no problem this area here is nice i'm going to use this for some temporary tool storage right now this little hatch here it's dark but it goes into the chain locker. Right now I've got some anchor rope. I'm gonna swap that out for actual chain further down the line. And also, I don't know if this is original, but check out this weird like wool on the walls. Yeah, that's, that's gonna have to change. Another really cool thing. And I know it's more of a safety thing than a cool thing, but it's cool too, is this front hatch. You just prop it up, lock it in. You're watching the stars at night. With the breeze coming in, how cool is that? And underneath this bed is the Ford AC. It's really quiet. Uh, there's another one in the back bedroom too. Uh, but right now this one's pulling double duty and it's doing just fine. If you get a couple of fans in here, also very quiet, it's really all you need. So one more cool thing before we leave this part of the boat is if you close this front door, and open this hidden door, you can get to another head inside. And it's great. It's got everything you need, really toilet uh, and the sink. This used to be, or at least was designed to be at one point, a, um, a wet head because it does have the drain cut out there. I don't know if this was changed at some point in its history or if it never had that, if that was some kind of upgrade when it was originally built. Either way, I don't want it because that's just opening up a lot of headaches. Everything gets wet, as the name implies, wet head. Uh, and it's just not worth it for me. And once we're back inside the bathroom here, there's another way out. And this one takes you back up into the salon. How freaking cool is that? It's basically if you could close off this door and have your very own ensuite uh, cabin with, uh, with the ensuite head there. And that's a really unique way to use this boat for guests or even if you had a small family uh, that lived on board. So, all right, let's go up the deck. So this is really cool. Look at that view. You really cannot beat that anywhere in the city. <sighs> Honestly, I, I could live here the rest of my life and be so happy. Up on top of the deck, you've got these rails. They are 100% original. The bimini and supports are not original, but they might as well be because they match perfectly. And it's really one of the things that makes this area so great. It's huge and it's completely covered. And I've also got an entire eyes and glass enclosure that goes on all four sides to about right here. It's not that useful in Florida because it's always warm enough to stay outside. And uh, so I just keep it stored away, but I do have it. It, comes, it came with the boat and 
it's nice to have. Right now I just have these temporary chairs. I got one, two, three. Uh, I'm gonna get some nicer chairs eventually for the time being. <sighs> Again, you just, you can't beat that view. I've got my bicycle here. I ride that to work. It's only about 10 minutes to the TV station. So uh, it's stay fit when it's cool enough, of course, because it is Florida. So you don't want to take it out when it's too hot. This hatch is interesting because it's two-parter. You've got your front door in this hatch. Um, right now I hold it up with a two by four, but I will get that hatch stand fixed in the next couple of weeks. All of this carpeting too. Uh, this came uh, with the boat. It's not original, but this carpeting is um, custom fit. I cannot imagine how expensive that was. And I'm very happy that it came with it already installed because it's very nice. These need to be all recovered, uh, but they, they do their job well. And of course, the star of the show, the flying bridge. Just look at it, beauty. I'm going to modernize the upper helm as much as I can, get all uh, new gauges, uh, new controls, as much as makes sense. I'm gonna leave the lower helm as original as possible. So that way you have the best of both worlds, where you have a functioning helm up here and a beautiful helm down there, also functioning. I've got a GPS unit that goes right there. I've got my VHF radio that goes right here. I've got cup holders on either side, and these actually uh, will never fill up because I put a little drain hose that goes out the side on those. So I've, I've tried to think of everything when I'm making upgrades. I, I don't wanna just put things in there that someone else is gonna have to deal with down the road or that I'm gonna have to deal with down the road because the second guy's always you. Uh, so anyway, when I do upgrades, quote unquote upgrades, a cup holder, but when I do these kind of things, I, I make sure that I have everything thought through. So it's permanently sealed in place with silicone and it's got a drain hole out the side. So all the water that gets in there flows right back out. So I think y'all are ready to hear the engines. So let's get that going. Again, these engines are original to the boat, 1978 uh, Crusader marinized. 454 big blocks, each with 306 horsepower-ish, which gives it, combined, as much horsepower as a 2003 Enzo Ferrari, which is my dream car. So, instead of buying a $3 million Ferrari, I bought a freaking boat with the same horsepower. How about that? So anyway, let's get this thing up and running. does that sound? That's just one of them right now. I love this. <laughs> For real. How cool is that? There are dolphins out there. Wait a couple seconds, you'll be able to see them. Ah, yes. Yes! That's my pot of dolphins. I love them. You might not believe it, but this thing was specced to go up to about 28 knots. That's with both engines open at full tilt. It's got a modified V hull is what they call it. I don't know exactly what that means, but I think it means it's a displacement hull that once it gets up to speed, will get up on a plane. If it says it can do it, I'm going to have to try it out sometime. But one thing with these engines is uh, they're not fuel efficient at all. You're probably talking gallons per mile if you actually get up to that 25 knot figure thereabout. There's one more room we haven't been to and it's down there. Let's go into the engine room. Starting our tour down the engine room, of course, is the two massive engines. Yeah, no, they're... I'm learning as I go with these, but obviously I'm no expert. And so there's a lot that I don't know. 
but every little bit that I do learn is just fascinating. And over there is a generator. Again, I don't know a whole ton about it, but it does work and it powers up all the AC stuff on board and that's good enough for me. It's got its own battery. The batteries for the two engines are underneath me on this plywood stand thing. There are two banks of two, uh, one for each engine. Moving forward, you can see there's this automatic fire suppression system. I don't know that I trust that, but it's there. Uh, and over here you have all your water management stuff. This pump right here is for the air conditioning. It sucks up water from outside and circulates it through. Over there, that blue tank is the water pressure tank. Behind it is the water heater. Right here is the battery charger. It charges all three banks of batteries separately and it balances and makes sure that they're good to go. Uh, let's turn around real quick. Uh, all right, so let's get another good look at these engines. They really are something else. Such monsters. Carbureted, not fuel injected. So you have to use ethanol free gas. Like a car engine is air cooled, but these are water cooled. Which just, it just means it's a whole different kind of headache, uh, basically. But it sucks up water from underneath the boat, pushes it through a cooling uh, system, and spits it out through the exhaust. And that's about all I know about it. Over here you don't have too much. You have the fuel uh, selector cut off, and I put this carbon monoxide detector up there. It's also got some automatic bilge pumps, and um, that's pretty much it down here. So how was I able to play Rocket League on a boat 150 feet off the shore? No, there's not a wired connection out to my, my slip. The answer is basically I turned my boat into a smartphone. Let me explain. We've got that antenna up top and I've got a 4G to ethernet router, kind of like a hotspot. Anyway, that picks up the 4G signal, turns it into a uh, an ethernet signal that the router can understand. We can wire that into a computer, into an Xbox smart TV, and you've got fast Wi-Fi on a boat. I will say when the network big news showed up, everyone on the dock came and asked me if they could borrow the password. So if you do that, know that you might have to say no to some people. And this right here is actually a sliding door as well. Uh, it's been blocked off at some point in the last 30 years, but it is designed to be a sliding door, another entryway. So maybe someday I'll, I'll figure that out, make sure it's all waterproof and good to go. I've tinted all of the bedroom windows uh, for obvious reasons, but also it helps keep it cool in the, the summertime. I didn't tint any of the main windows because I just love the way they look from the inside and the outside. I, I couldn't bring myself to do that but the back windows are tinted. Up on the bow, there isn't a whole lot. There's the hatch that we opened earlier. We've got the, the anchor. I need to get a chain for that. I've got two 30 amp lines and a water line heading toward the inlets. We've got this cleat that pulls double duty for either side through these loops there. And you've got your pulpit, which uh, is kind of useful for getting lines out, I guess. Uh, anyway, it's a cool place to stand. And that is my 1978 Chris Craft Corinthian. 38 feet, it feels like a much bigger boat. It's one of those things you really have to see in person because no matter how I've tried, I've, I've tried three different cameras, you really can't get a good look at how it feels to be inside. The way they designed it with the, the big windows and the open spaces, it'll never look as big as it feels on the inside. It's absolutely gorgeous and I love it inside and out. I would not trade this boat for that 70 footer down there. That's how much I love this. So if you ever get a chance to look at one of these, highly recommend it. Well, thanks for coming along with me on this tour. I, I've been waiting so long to get this done. I've been putting it off, but now it's just, it's perfect right now. Uh, I'm gonna try to do two different videos after this. Um, one about the, the search for the right boat and the process of buying it and the horrible process of moving it. This boat was 300 miles away in a landlocked lake with no hydraulic lift around to get it out of the water. This was an absolute nightmare to move. I cannot sugarcoat that. I'm gonna make a video on buying it and moving it. So stick around if you wanna see that. Otherwise, I'm glad I got to show you around today.